This is a carrot. Well, a sprite of one. And this is a photorealistic capture of a carrot using something called photogrammetry. What you see is 50 years of evolution. Let's talk about sprites, the unsung hero of 2D gaming, and how they set the stage for the immersive virtual worlds we know today. The year is 1971. Video games were just blinking rectangles at this time, yet something revolutionary was already brewing. A year before Pong stole the spotlight, computer space used analog circuitry to create its visuals. Fast forward to 1974. The Atari's arcade game Tank brought us one of the earliest examples of hardware-supported sprites. Finally, characters and objects could move independently of the background. And by the 1980s, sprites leveled up. Advancements in hardware meant they were now colorful, animated, and full of personalities. Think of Pac-Man. Those ghosts, they weren't just enemies, they had their quirks and their moods and even their charm. And Super Mario Bros, it went even further. Using Sprite Sheets, which is a collection of tiny images played one after another to create fluid animation, like Mario's now iconic jump. At this point, every sprite was hand-drawn, painstakingly crafted pixel by pixel. But then the 90s rolled it, and sprites took another leap. They weren't just art anymore, they started to look like real life. Prince of Persia or Mortal Kombat turned actual footage of actors into sprites, making it feel like a video inside of a game. It was a game changer. If you're curious, I highly recommend the Making of Prince of Persia by Jordan Mechner is a fascinating peek behind the curtain. Meanwhile, developers started experimenting with something new, 3D wireframe graphics. Instead of filling in objects, they drew only their outlines, like a skeleton or a blueprint. It was a bold step, but those outlines lacked one thing that makes an object look real, the middle parts. And what are those middle parts? They are the building block of every 3D game you've ever played the greatest graphical invention since sliced bread. Polygon <coughs> polygons, 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 polygons are flat two-dimensional shapes made up of straight edges, and they act as the foundational piece used to construct 3D models in computer graphics. They come in a few flavors, triangles. They are polygons with three vertices and three edges. Triangles are the most stable and efficient type of polygon for rendering. Quads are polygons with four vertices and four edges. Quads are easier to manipulate during modeling, especially for creating smooth surfaces, often converted into triangles for rendering in game engines. There are also n-gons, convex polygons, concave polygons, and procedural polygons. If you know about this, feel free to jump into the comments and explain this stuff. So polygons by themselves, yeah, they're a little plain. Outside of their shape, there's not much going on. But think about this. Have you ever gotten a Christmas present wrapped so perfectly that you could already tell what was underneath? Like you see a box and think, ooh, a PlayStation, and then surprise shoes, or maybe a bottle of Corona, or even the unmistakable outline of a bike. Well, that's basically texture mapping. It's like wrapping a 3D object in color, shading, and even some grime to make it look like something real. The walls in Uncharted, wrapped. The table in Mafia 2, also wrapped. Texture mapping is how this happens. It's the process of taking 2D images and applying it to a surface of a 3D model, adding color, detail, or patterns that make it instantly recognizable. Back in the 2000s, when the PS2 hit the scene, it could render around 5 million triangles per second. To put that into perspective, remember that carrot from the beginning? That original scan was 5 million triangles. So yeah, we basically have to choose between rendering a single carrot or playing Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3. Kinda wild, right? That's why early games looked so blocky. It wasn't just a style choice, it was hardware limitations. Developers had to optimize models to keep gameplay smooth. But as hardware improved, things started to change. Models became more detailed, environments got bigger, more immersive, and suddenly, gaming felt a whole lot less like a collection of blocks. The PS2 could handle 5 million polygons per second, which was very impressive at the time. But then the PS3 came along and cranked that up to an absurd 60 million polygons per second. Games like The Last of Us 
pushed that hardware to its absolute limit. And guess what? Then the PS4 arrived, blowing minds with its ability to render 600 million polygons per second. Suddenly, games weren't just games, they were works of art. Uncharted still stands out as a masterpiece from that era, and for good reason. Now, with the PS5, all right, so I couldn't dig up exact numbers, but we're talking billions of polygons per second. It's insane. And with hardware this powerful, artists and developers have been able to create models and environments that look more realistic and detailed than ever before. And that brings us to one of the most fascinating technologies out there. So I work in the imaging space, you know, cameras, lights, action, and all that good stuff. And the fact that we can take cameras into the real world and snap a bunch of photos that turn them into 3D models? Honestly, if that's not cool, I do not know what is. This is called photogrammetry. Photogrammetry is the process that creates highly detailed 3D models by capturing multiple overlapping photos of an object or environment. These images are processed using specialized software to generate a digital 3D representation. Oh, and by the way, there's an entire industry built around this. People actually travel around snapping photos of objects, turning them into 3D models and selling them online for developers to use in their games. One big player in this space is Quixel, which Epic Games snapped up a while ago. If you've seen the Unreal Engine tech demo of their Nanite technology, those jaw-dropping environments, yep, they were scanned using photogrammetry. And what's even cooler is that getting started in this tech isn't as hard as you might think. These days you can use your phone and an app to create your own 3D scans. Sure, there are some quirks like dealing with baked in lighting, but hey, that's a discussion for another time. So quick question, does Epic, yeah, the folks behind Unreal Engine and Quixel also have their own specialized program for photogrammetry? You bet your tissue they do. It's called Reality Capture, but they're not the only game in town. There are plenty of other options out there, like Agisoft, Mattershape, Pix4D, Meshroom, and a few others. Side story, about three years ago, Vox put out a video called How Video Game Rocks Are Made. I'll put the link in the description. I was obsessed watching it over and over, trying to figure out how this whole process worked. So naturally, I grabbed a few screenshots, tapped into some work connections and combined that with my basic understanding of 3D printing and concepts like cross-polarization. The result, I built a rig to capture real world objects and turn them into digital assets. It was a lot of fun and a bit of a rabbit hole. Back to talking about the photos. But seriously, how does this actually work? So here's the deal. You grab a camera, maybe throw in a strobe light for good measure and start snapping a ton of photos of your object. The key, every photo needs to overlap with the next one by at least 70%. Why? Because that overlap is what makes the whole process click in the next step. Once you've got your photos, you load them into the program, in this case, reality capture, and let the software do the heavy lifting. First, it aligns all the images, but that's just the beginning. The software then identifies matching points across these photos, creating what's called a point cloud, a 3D scatter plot of your object. But a cloud of dots isn't a 3D object yet. So the program connects these dots, filling in the space between them with, you guessed it, polygons. And because these were real world photos, the software can also extract the texture from it and wrap those textures around the object. Therefore, you don't just get a basic model, you end up with a detailed, lifelike figure that looks like it's straight out of reality. Neat, right? But wait, there is more. Multi-camera rigs, which is hundreds of cameras wired together that can capture people in astonishing detail. It's no surprise that games like FIFA rely on this setup to create their incredibly lifelike player models. But it doesn't stop at gaming. This technology has found its way into other fields as well. Archaeologists use it to preserve ancient artifacts digitally. Museums use it to create interactive exhibits, and the movie industry uses it to bring characters and environment to life like never before. I'll put a link in the description below as well for this other thing, which is where MELS, a studio in Canada, uses laser scanning and photogrammetry to digitize an entire film set. Because even after the physical set was torn down, they still have the 3D model. Now they can bring it into a virtual production environment to reshoot scenes and grab pickups. And you might be wondering, why go through all this effort? Well, building a set costs a lot of money. Like it could be a million dollars. Plus, studio space is in high demand. If another project books it, you're forced to pack up and tear it all down. So digitizing means they can now move to another stage and get those extra shots without starting from scratch. So let's get back to video games and some of the examples that might be using it. 
Vanishing of Ethan Carter was a pioneer at using photogrammetry on a large scale for open environments. The developers captured real-world elements such as rocks, buildings, and landscapes using high-resolution cameras to recreate the Polish Karkonos and Mountains. Star Wars Battlefront? DICE uses photogrammetry extensively to recreate props, costumes, and weapons from the original Star Wars films. By scanning physical assets from Lucasfilm archives, they achieved a level of authenticity that bought the iconic universe to life. They also probably scanned a couple of rocks. In Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Infinity Ward employed photogrammetry to recreate lifelike environments and props including destroyed vehicles, weapons, and urban settings, and most likely some rocks. Red Dead Redemption 2 Rockstar Games used photogrammetry to craft one of the most visually stunning open world games ever made. Scanning these rocks resulted in an immense recreation of the American frontier. Turn 10 Studios for Mo Forza Motorsports uses photogrammetry and LiDAR to scan iconic racetracks with incredible accuracy. This includes capturing trackside details like rocks. Tracks are designed to provide a near one-to-one -one likeness to their real-world counterparts. Mandalord is the brainchild of Gregory Stechen, working under studio name Slavic Magic. Using Quixel's Megascans, he managed to solo develop a huge portion of the game. But seriously, just look at the game, it's stunning. And this technology played a huge role in making it possible. And that's a really cool note to end on. These kind of tools allow small teams and even sole developers the ability to skip months of handcrafted assets and focus on bringing their vision to life. Okay, bye.